Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Nick Reeves and in this video we're going to have a bit of an update. I'm literally just in the house from working away for six weeks. Um, just literally six hours ago I arrived home. Um, managed to have a barbecue in that time and I've now managed to move the mountain of deliveries that I've had in that time that I've been away into the garage. I'm just going to have a quick sort through, see what there is. There's a few interesting things. Most of this lot will eventually become videos some point in the future. Um, but a lot of it, you can see there's a pile of stuff here. There's some more bits down here which we'll come to. But nothing to it, so I thought I'd just go through what we've got here. A couple of motors that I bought. These are second hand, salvaged out of models. I think it was like a five or something I paid for these. A couple of 2212 13s, 1000 kV. I think they're a fiver, you know. Uh, uh, there's some of them should be around a wing or two. Um, this, I know exactly what this is just by the feel of it. This is an eBay purchase. Where have I put them there? Um, I just went looking for this. Um, and I've used this company called Darbro RC. I'll see if I can get a link to it. I'm not sure if I will. Um, they've been spot on every time I've ordered anything from them. Um, I've only had ordered from them through eBay, I think. But you might remember in the Jungmeister here, I was having an issue with the uh, throttle. The, the, there's too much slop in it, so it wasn't going to idle properly. So I bought some Bowden cable. Now, those of you who don't know what Bowden cable is, it's like a twisted wire push rod, flexible push rod. Let's see if I can find the end of it here. One of these. Anyway, it's like a flexible push rod in a, like a, a tube. So you can bend it around and I should be able to get quite a nice radius and hopefully still have it work um, as a push rod in the front of the model. It does mean I've got to take the whole engine apart um, to do it, but it's one of those things. Now, somebody's just walked in here that I'm guessing wants to be in the video as well. So, bear with me a second. For a start, it's not Ewan. This is helper number one. This is Daisy. I don't, I don't think you've seen Daisy on here before. You haven't been in video, have you? So, Daisy doesn't do much modelling or whatnot with us. You can fly, can't you? You just don't really get any enjoyment out of it yet. <laughs> do you? Yeah. But what we're doing, we're just doing some unboxing of all the parcels, okay? And telling people what they all are. So we've just done a couple of motors and some push rods. Now this one, again, I've looked through a couple of these, or most of these, to know what they are. These have come from a company called Flytron. Again, I'll stick links underneath. These, you might not be able to see them that well. But they are little high intensity LED strobes. Um, I think these are one watt LEDs. Great little packet. And they're like a disc. And I've got a couple of dome covers for them. They're probably 20 mil in diameter for the, the package that they come in. Oh, sorry, the package of the unit, not the packaging. Um, so they're quite compact. They run off receiver power, but you've also got two pads where you can actually short out the pad and change the pattern that they flash at. So I've got them to a try. I've got a couple of ideas. What? Yeah, I've um, got a couple of ideas as to what they're going to go on. I'm going to try them out on my Zaggy first, my old hack that's over there. Needs a bit of a refurb. You can open up that one. It's already open somewhere. So it should be. You should read what it is. No, that's not open. So you can open that one carefully. Um, SD card. Now, it'll become apparent why I've got that 32 gig. Again, it's just a standard sound disc off eBay, nothing too exciting. What have we got? What have we got? I don't know. Now, <laughs> we've got some infamous Tower Pro from Banggood. That's from Banggood. From Banggood, Tower Pro servos, MG90S's. These are the Metal Gear ones. Apparently, these are pretty good for what they are. Um, I think it was like a tenner for six. So, got these. I'm gonna lie. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. Half of the stuff here, I know what it is because it says on the packet. But it's to go in what's down here, which is the more exciting stuff. So that's some servos that have come. Even you don't know what these are, do you? Down here. Uh, no, you know what servos are. Uh, right, you can open up that one. Uh, this says aluminium column on it, but it's not an aluminium column. 
couple of motor mount standoffs. Now there's a, probably a few of you watching this that will know exactly what they're for and probably alluding to what's down here and what those servos are used for. So I'll just keep them safe for the moment. Put that packet that's now empty down there. So what have you got? What are they? You have to speak up so people can hear you. Motors. Okay, so these are a couple more motors. I happen to have an old one sat here. What are they? What's the, what's the numbers on them? Um, there, look. There. Wait. Oh. So, so these are 22, 22.12.6s, 22kv. So they're going to be good for on 3s. On a 6x4, so it should be pretty alright. Now, again, Two of those, two motor mounts. You're starting to see the picture where I'm going with this. And what's that? Okay, you can open up that one. I know what that is. Okay, this isn't very exciting, this one in my hands. We've got some more E6000 glue. Um, pretty good stuff, this. I've only started using it recently. Um, hold on, darling. This, again, I'll put the link in the bottom to it. This is an acrylic based glue. It's like a goopy. Type con you can use it wet, I slap the glue on, put it together, we can use it as contact adhesive, put it on, smear it out, let it dry, and then touch it together, you get a one touch contact. Um, pretty good stuff. Six quid I think, maybe even less than that I think for that tube. Again, I'll try and put links to all this stuff below. What have you got there? Um, you must lean forward a bit. A spring handle chipping hammer. Right, so that's nothing to do with model aeroplanes whatsoever, that's for welding. <laughs> That's for chipping off all the bits of weld that aren't meant to be there. Okay, so I've got a few other bits and pieces. I've got a welding mask that's arrived as well. You can go and put that in the van with the welding rods. Number two helpers just wandered in and wandered off again. <laughs> um, what's that? I don't know what that is. Okay, you can pull that out. And if you know what they are, I'll be surprised. Circuit boards of some sort. Circuit boards. The like boards things. <laughs> okay. So what we've got here, we've got two omnibus F4 B2 control boards. Flight control. Flight control boards, yes. <laughs> so these are tiny little things. I've never used them before. Again, you won't see them that well in the packet. 35mm square or 35mm across the diagonals, so probably 30mm square. Um a lot of people are running these with INAV. Um, I'm yet to experiment with them. These were cheap. These were like six quid or something, uh, or 11 quid. There was like a flash sale on them. And I thought, I'll stuff it, I'll get a couple and play with them. So, got those to play with. Um, now, again, all the links, I'll try and get them in the bottom. They might not be on offer now, but I'll link to the ones that are there. These, I've been after these for a little while. Now, some of the larger models that I fly, they need heavier duty hardware. If you fly large models, you know what I'm on about. One of the issues I've got is there's a particular model I've got in the loft. Uh, I've had it for a long time now, but I haven't finished it. One of the things that was stopping me finishing it was getting the flap geometry right and how to hinge it. Now these hinges, I was actually put onto, or I saw somebody else use these hinges on their particular model of the one I've got in the loft. And I thought, that's a great idea, see if I can source some. That's like six for eight quid. That seems expensive. But then when you look at the size of them, I'm trying to put my hand against them for size. They're blooming huge hinges, um, proper heavy duty. They come with all the, what looks like M3 hardware. So you can actually bolt through. These aren't for your foamies. These are, probably one of these hinges probably weighs more than one foamy ready to fly. But I found a company in the UK that had them in stock, um, so I ordered a couple of packs. Uh, I think six, yeah, six hinges per pack, so I've got 12, which should do four, three models if I've worked it out right, depending on how many hinges I need. So down. Yeah, I know helper two is here as well, <laughs> lurking behind us. So put that down there in the pile. All right, just down there, down. That's a bin pile just now. So got a couple of other things. I'm starting to get a bit bigger now. Now this. Some people might recognise the box. It's a slicker mite on it, but I can guarantee it's not a slicker mite in here with a knife. Uh, this 
if it's what I think it is, I haven't actually opened this one up yet. This was a purchase through Facebook, one of the sale groups. Um, I believe it came from an estate sale. It's pretty heavy, this box. Oh, yes. So, we have, what have we got? If those people can't see. Yep, we've got some engines. That. It's not that old, really done. That's an OS 26 FS. Kind of hard to come by just now. So, that's just a main job propeller. Yeah. We also have a 40 FS, which one's bigger size, as in, no, look, can you see that one's bigger than the other? Yeah, so that one's got more power. So we've got a 40 FS, and if my guess is right, and here, so 50. what do you reckon it is? 50. A 50? 45. Mm -hmm. Nope, you're all wrong. Is that 30? Nope, it's another 40 FS. Yeah. So these are totally gummed up. I did get them cheap. I, did, I got them because I thought, well, if I can strip them down, get them going again, they're, they're good engines. If they're just gummed up with caster, they just need a good strip, a good soak clean possibly new bearings if the carters got into them and corroded them or should I say the nitro methane uh, the nitro methanol no the nitro methane that's in the methanol fuel has eaten away it's corroded the um the bearings but yeah I mean can you see that in there all the oil and crud and everything it's all in there mm -hmm. yeah so that'll all be cleaned out so we've got three engines we seem to have a tank of some sort that might be used for something or nothing <laughs> but this is the one this little 26 is the one I was actually after, um, but the guy did me quite a good deal on all of them. Um, he, he said to me, he thinks all of these engines have been in free flight models. So it gives you an idea as to the size of them. If you don't know the, 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 if you've never used one of these sort of uh, engines, have a look online, it'll give you an idea of them running. I mean, this one's all rusty, so it's gonna need a new plug, but I can't see anything obviously wrong with it. It doesn't appear to be any crash damage or anything like that. Apart so, bit what bit at the bottom? And that's not crash damage, that's just, because well, it's, it's made of aluminium, they corrode. It's like aluminium doesn't rust, it corrodes, so it's just a little bit of corrosion on it. But again, it's not, a, th these aren't collector's items to me just now. These are going to be usable engines, so that can go in the bin pile. <laughs> and that can go in the bin pile. Okay, so next box. Okay, this is where it starts to get a bit more exciting. Can I open it? No, I'm not going to open it just now. Oh. This is. So you might be able to read it from there. This is a, an, a, a wing that a lot of people have been rambling around about how good they are for a long time. This is a Reptile Sky Shadow S800, 800mm span. They were on offer again. I think it's something like thirty-six quid or something. This is just the kit. Hence why I've got motors, I've got servos, flight controllers, all that sort of stuff. Some glue. Um, but a bit of a bonus. I ordered one, and it arrived. It was, well, this is all arrived when I was away at work. It arrived, and then what? A week, ten days later. What? Another one arrived. Totally free gratis, seemingly. <laughs> so, what I think I'm going to do is kit out one, get it flying, get used to it, experiment with it, and then once I've destroyed it, build the other one <laughs> and put all the gear into it. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, good idea? Yeah. Okay, so that kind of alludes to why we've got the two motors, two motor mounts, <laughs> loads of servos, two flight controllers. We might end up having two of these flying at any one time. Hey, you in? And hopefully we won't hit all the doubles. Yeah, well, we'll see. So, that's something to build. I'll put links at the bottom of this video to these. Um, there will probably be like unboxings and builds of these, but apparently there's not much building in them. It's like an evening gluing it together and fitting it out. It'll probably take longer for me to get my head around the flight controller, get that programmed than anything else. I suspect what I'll do though is I'll fly this, what I'd call totally manually, a receiver, a battery and servos, and just get used to it and see what it's like. Um, 
They're meant to fly pretty well on that motor on a 2200 3S, which we've got bucket loads of. Um, one of the reasons why we, I got the first one. Um, and soon we got the second one as well. So the fun doesn't end there. In the front of these, these are designed for FPV, so you've got an FPV camera mount. But you also get space to put an action camera in it. So this one, this is the... Oh, who makes this one? SJ? No, it's not GoPro. They're too expensive. They're too expensive when you're going to crash them into the ground. This one, I can't remember, is this an SJ? I think this is the SJ range. SJ7000 rings a bell. Um, I'll be able to find a link to it where I'll... I can't see a code on it. Where's the code? Can you see a code? No, you can see lines and then numbers. No, that's just... I don't see which one it is. But anyway, I can put a link to the what I bought. Um, it is effectively a GoPro clone type camera. Um, there's loads of them about. Of the reviews, this is the one that got the best reviews for the money. This was 30 quid. Hence why I got the SD card to go in as well. If I do smash it into the ground, I'm not too worried about 30 quid compared to how much 300 quid or whatever they offer a GoPro. This one actually comes with, I haven't opened it up yet, comes with a waterproof case and various mounts and things. Because the camera's just there. The rest of the box is all the, the bits. I mean, you can feel the weight of that. It's quite a heavy box for a little camera. Yeah. And all the weights there. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of stuff in that one. So if you want to put that down there. Is there more? And that down there. Yeah, just, just put them down there. Yeah. Um, so that's some flying wings. Now also while I was away, our friends at Little had their chuck gliders on sale again. <laughs> so my lovely wife Mummy, I, <laughs> I said to Liz, could you go down to Little and get me a glider or two, please? That's been a few weeks ago because I don't know that. So she got me a glider or two. Or three. Or three. <laughs> These are, or were, eight quid each, I think. Now, obviously, depending on when you're watching this video, these are probably not on sale anymore. But they seem to come around periodically, either every six months or every year. Um, most places, the kids don't seem to get them because they're models, go and buy them all up. Um, eight quid each, I think. Um, there's a good uh, Facebook group for converting these to radio controlled. Um, various different incarnations of them. Um, they're designed for these sorts of people as just chuck gliders. <laughs> but the likes of me and now, now him like to chop them about and turn them into all sorts of things, so. Okay, what, you want to have one as radio controlled? Yeah, just a car. Well, we'll see. <laughs> what I'm thinking is doing a, possibly a rudder elevator glider, an aileron elevator glider, seeing how that goes, then possibly sticking a motor and battery into the front of them. Free flight? No, not doing free flight. Um, and then possibly, a ridiculous one with lots of power and lots of speed <laughs> and lots of carbon um, the other one now the other thing as well is since being home i've had a message from a friend of mine who also bought some of these saying that he might not ever get to convert them so at some point i might even get some more but that's in the future so these are all the projects that i've got going on since i've ever arrived since i've been away um, still got other projects to do um, we're actually away on holiday day after tomorrow. Friday. Yeah, day after tomorrow. <laughs> um, so that's a, another week where I won't necessarily get lots of air modelling done, but I might sort of put an aeroplane in the car to fly off the beach here, which would be good. So there might be a video of us flying in a place called uh, Black Rock Sands or down that way somewhere in North Wales. Have to wait and see what we're allowed to do or where we can fly. Um, but yeah, that's a bit of an update. Um, all of this lot I'll be doing videos on as and when I come around to do it. Might be sooner, might be later, might be never. Um, but yeah, I'll try and do as much as I can on this lot for what we're doing in the future. So uh, until next time. And that was all in six weeks. What? I think you got it all in six weeks. Yeah. So until next time, 
I'll catch you all again soon. Thanks for watching the video. Give us a thumbs up if you like what I've just shown you. Click on my face down here. You can subscribe. Remember to tick the bell so you get notifications as to when new videos are put up. And down this side, there'll probably be some videos that you might also like to watch. Catch you next time.